Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, at least we didn't lose yesterday. That's the good news. And we've got two Monday night games tonight. Uh, I think actually my dad wants to take Baltimore giving up the points and taking the over 50 on that one. So we'll see how that works for him. He won three out of four yesterday. So he was asking, the funny thing was, he was asking me, what, what do you think? I said, Dad, don't take my word for it. You've been doing better than I have. And thank God the Cowboys had a bye week because you got on the positive side without betting on the Cowboys. Speaking of the Cowboys here, some interesting thing. You know, last week we had the whole Jerry Jones blow up that literally blew up on Jerry Jones. It was not pretty when he went after Sean and RJ and so on. And stuff, but here's the question that I have to ask because I'm 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 sitting here, I'm trying to figure out if we're crazy as the fans, or is it the problem with the Cowboys and all the stuff that they do? Because you know I'm sitting here. First of all, Stephen Jones is usually like his dad, always on. You know, I, I thought he was on Mondays on 105 The Fan doing his thing and all that, and then Jerry was Tuesday and Friday. But have you noticed we haven't seen Stephen Jones or much of Jerry Jones, in fact, since that blow up? You know, he kind of doubled down, uh, I guess, about Thursday or Friday on being questioned and so on and leading. But you really have not seen Stephen Jones defending what happened or the blow up. I, I haven't seen anything on it. And some people have said to me that they think that Jerry is taking the bullet, you know, the falling on the sword, so to speak, for his son. And I'd like to know what you guys think about that, because I'm just trying to understand what's going on. We literally have a, we are literally at a crossroads right now. We're at a crossroads of what are we going to do? Now, I'm going to give you my take here. Here's my take. When it looks like, to me, that what you're seeing in real time, the difference of having players versus having having the players, okay? Jerry Jones, you know, his whole thing of we're going to do more with less. And then Stephen Jones' whole thing of we believe in our own guys. Okay. Well, here's an interesting one. Brock Purdy has dropped about 23 points in his rating because of the injuries to Christian McCaffrey, Ayuk now is gone, and Debo Samuels in and out of the lineup. And so you can look at that and say a direct correlation of the talent around him makes the quarterback better. You can look at the week before, I believe it was, or two weeks ago, where Buffalo literally had less than 100 yards of receiving with uh, the wide receivers they have. And instantly, they bring in Mari Cooper. Mind you, we traded for a fifth. They traded a third for. He immediately paid dividends getting a touchdown. You can look at the difference with the Eagles adding Saquon. The Eagles are 4-2 and two right now. Without Saquon in that offense, I honestly don't believe that they have more than two wins. He's got to be worth at least two wins to that team. And so you're looking at this in real time and understand that the time's getting short. Today's the 21st of October. The 5th of November is the trade deadline. And so if you're going to look at it and realize we made a mistake and maybe there's time to really try and save this season, then this is the time that you need to be working on it. Maybe we haven't seen them because maybe they're circling the wagons and trying to figure out who might be good to try and help us that's affordable for the Cowboys. Now, for those out there that say that, you know, well, we can't add anybody because Dak is the highest paid player in the NFL, you know, that's on paper only. Deshaun Watson 
got a $230 million fully guaranteed contract three years ago. And in that time, the Cleveland Browns were able to add quite a few pieces and make the playoffs back-to-back, including taking a guy that we said we couldn't afford. You understand that, right? They had Odell Beckham Jr. They had Amari Cooper, okay? They paid Miles Garrett and so on. So don't tell me that they couldn't afford it because they paid him. Because his contract is only $1 million fully guaranteed less than Dak, who got his this year. He got his three years ago, which meant it cost more back then. So we need some help. We need some guys to get healthy. But even with everybody healthy, we could still use some pieces to go over the top. And right now you're looking at some teams that may be fire sailing, like, for example, the Cleveland Browns. That may be Miles Garrett. And we know that they're not going to go for Miles Garrett because that's too much money. But we can see with our own eyes that talent does matter and that we do need to do something more than what we have. Now, I think Jerry Jones is scheduled, of course, for his Tuesday show with Sean and RJ. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow to see, you know, if there's any change in tune or um, if he's still as feisty as he was Last week, you know, if there's an apology, I'm curious to see how that goes. But clearly, the Cowboys need to do something more than they have. Now, dealing with Mike McCarthy. Now, you know, I was just talking with Game Time Brian and stuff, you know, and and he's like, I'm done with Mike McCarthy, and he's an idiot and things. You know, Mike McCarthy may not be the best coach in the world, but you got to understand that he at least has seemed to have, for for some case, been able to work with Mike, uh, work with Stephen and Jerry Jones, which is a dynamic that we don't seem to be able to put in the equation. We always have players and coaches that we would love to see here, but very few of them are going to get here because of the organization and the structure of it. You know, people say, well, let's go get Bill Belichick. I don't know that Bill Belichick is going to want to be micromanaged by the Joneses. And I honestly believe that the Cowboys, more than anything else, is maybe what they need to do is look younger than where we are. Bill Belichick, 70 years old, although he's getting ready to get married to a 25-year-old. You got Mike McCarthy, who's 60. You got Stephen Jones, that's 60. You got Mike Zimmer, that's what, 66, 72? And you got Jerry, that's 82 dealing with young men that maybe you need somebody who's from the dot-com era, somebody who's used to tweeting and understanding the podcast and things that maybe the people that we have with this new generation aren't relating the right way with these players and finding the right ones. Just a thought, just a thought, good people. Alrighty, good people. I'll see you guys tonight um, for Monday Night Football, and I hope you're having a great day. Peace out.